Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. So now that you can go to google.com slash Chrome and download Google Chrome, their first web browser, which they've been working on for two years, now that it's available, are you going to switch? I mean, granted, this is a, an early version of their new web browser based on very, very, very solid pieces of technology, software that's certainly been around for a while. We've covered uh, other bits of Chrome in the past, of course, in the, the past day specifically related to Google Chrome. But is it enough in your limited time of playing with it, in limited time in the sense that it's only been available for an hour or two? Uh, I've been, you know, diving deep, as deep as I possibly can into it to try to uncover uh, certain features that aren't on the surface but are certainly uh, very much part of the overall user experience to share them with you, other power users. And I, I think that uh, Google Chrome will ride that line, I think, very well between uh, having enough power for power users and having just enough power for people like my parents who don't really care much about which web browser they use so long as it works and it works well. Uh, there are certain bits that are intuitive to this first version of Google Chrome, uh, but uh, there are also some parts that aren't as, um, how, we, how shall we say, as smooth as they could be, not just in the, the UI in general, but in the UX. But, you know, it's, it's available as a beta uh, for the Windows platform right now. Hopefully a, a binary will be compiled for uh, Linux and Mac OS X at some point in the very near future. I've been running Google Chrome inside a virtual machine, a VMware virtual machine uh, on XP and a VMware virtual machine running Windows Vista. Performance is still uh, amazing. And I think that's uh, been uh, most of the commentary that's been running on FriendFeed, Twitter, Facebook, and in blogs. People have just been overly impressed with the speed of uh, Google Chrome, largely because of the underlying uh, rendering engine, WebKit, which talked about before in the past. I'm a Safari user. Right now, I'm probably going to be sticking with Safari as my default web browser. Duh, because as I said, I'm you know running on Mac OS X on the desktop. But inside of Windows, I would very much be inclined to use uh, Google, as, well, at least Google Chrome as the default web browser, largely because of the, the power user features inside of it, as well as the raw speed. So uh, we've left the uh, chat room right now in the channel at live.perillo.com. We've left it unmoderated, so you can see a, a flood of people just flying by, unless, of course, uh, someone flipped the moderated bit. I'm trying to get as much commentary as we possibly can. A lot of people's experiences are going to be uh, all over the board, especially with uh, new software like this. It is exciting uh, to look at this because Google is really taking a, a, a huge step forward. So if you happen to be a power user like me, you may uh, like these five or, or six or so uh, tips that uh, I've been able to uncover in the limited amount of time that I've been playing with it. If you go to the Omni bar, and that is what uh, Google is referring to uh, the address bar as, I mean, you would know it as an address bar in another browser. They're calling it the Omni bar because it's the only bar where you can enter in text. It does everything, and believe me, it does everything. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here and just show you. If you type in about colon memory, no spaces in there, what you're going to get is you're going to get a web browser tab that's going to show you a summary of all the processes that are running inside the browser as well as, this is where it gets kind of neat, you can run a, a direct comparison to all the web browsers that you have open at that time. So if you have Internet Explorer open, Firefox, Opera, or whatever, they'll show up here at the top including the specific version numbers, and if you scroll over to the right, you'll see the memory and virtual memory being used. So you could load up all your favorite web pages inside of all those browsers and see which one is most memory efficient. People have already been reporting uh, that uh, you know Google is doing the best. Chrome is number one, even compared directly to WebKit and uh, Safari, uh, in, and that would be a truer comparison, uh, showing the optimizations that Google has done specifically with the rendering of, of uh, running of JavaScript. Uh, but this is a way that you're going to be able to tell on your own system how well it's working. Uh, and again, right now this is only available for Windows. I don't know if this is going to work the same way when uh, binaries are released for other platforms as well. Uh, another neat thing that uh, I, I've discovered is, is and they, they, they've talked about it in, uh, in the, uh, the webcast and it's documented on the web, but if you want to get to the task manager, uh, you can right click somewhere in the title bar of the window and go to task manager. 
and then it'll pull up this little task manager. It looks a lot like the Windows task manager, really. Another way of getting to it, I believe, is shift escape uh, inside, uh, as long as you've got Google Chrome in the foreground. What you're going to see is you're going to see the open tabs, as well as, this is what Google did that I think really sets it apart from other browsers. If you have any plugins that are running, for instance, a, a Flash app or a Shockwave app, you will see that process as a separate entry here in your task manager. So let's say there is a runaway Flash app in one of your tabs, you can just select it and then end the process if it's causing problems. So they separated, they separated every possible element out of each particular tab and uh, well that would be web page so that if there is a problem instead of taking down the entire browser you can just kill the problematic plugin and let's face it flash is a plugin so certainly uh, this is something that I think is most welcome uh, for not just power users but specifically for novices as well once they they kind of learn their way around it maybe it's going to turn novices into power users as far as web browsers go I don't know I'm just saying Good on you, Google, for giving us task manager and separating the processes in the browser. Um, here's another interesting uh, little thing that I, I, I discovered. You know, I like clicking on just about everything that I see inside a, a web browser, which gets me in trouble. Let's say uh, I'm, I'm here on friend feed, and I'm looking here. It says Chrome. There's a friend feed. Someone uh, made a, a friend feed room here. Uh, so let's say I want to browse that friend feed room, but I don't want uh, anything that I see uh, or do inside that uh, browser instance to be tracked at all. Uh, I would then open, I could open a, an incognito window. This uh, is basically private browsing. Or if I'm right there on the link and I just want to just jump into a new incognito window, I could right click that link and then open that link in an incognito window. And then everything that I do in this browser instance is going to be private. And you'll know it's private because you'll see this little private eye in the upper left-hand corner of the Google Chrome window pop up. And so I know everything that I do inside this browser session is not going to be tracked. It's not going to be traced. Nothing. No links, no history, no downloads, no nothing. Well, of course, if you download something, that's going to exist on your hard drive. That's a different story. So uh, you can right-click a link, open a new incognito window. Uh, here's another point for you. I'm going to I'm going to close that incognito window because I need to show you something about history. Let's do a search for Chris. Uh, in the Omni bar, I'm doing a search for the word Chris, and it says search Google for Chris. See, it's Omni or Chris.Perillo.com, or I can see 32 recent pages in history containing Chris. So the nice thing about searching history, yeah, just a re if I browse history, it's just got the little uh, fav icons and it's got the links. That, that you know go off to uh, those particular web pages but if I search history as I just did in the Omni bar or I'm doing here on the history pane yeah I'm getting a, a slight uh, or a smaller description shorter description but if you go over to the right hand side of the window you'll also get thumbnails so they're actually saving the thumbnails of the web pages that you visit so when you search history you can also get a visual representation of those pages that you visited in history. I thought that was a, kind of a, a nice little addition. Certainly something that I, I, uh, I will like since I'm, I'm much more of a visual learner. You know, you'll go to a web page. You can't remember the address, but you remember what it looked like, and you kind of remember the keyword. Those thumbnails are going to come in handy. Uh, another thing you're going to want to dive into almost immediately is the keyboard shortcuts. And believe me, uh, Google did not take any shortcuts when it came to uh, giving you a, a wide array of, of shortcuts to help speed up certain tasks. Uh, to open up a new window in incognito mode, you could use Control Shift N. To reopen the last tab you closed, say inadvertently, uh, and it'll remember the last 10 tabs that you closed, just do a Control Shift T. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm just highlighting a, a few of the more interesting ones that I've found. You can just go to uh, the Google Chrome website and they've listed them all for you. Um, control Enter will work if you got used to that particular keyboard shortcut inside of Internet Explorer. And Alt Enter will work as well. Control Enter, if you type in the, the root of a domain, so you want to go to perillo.com, you just type in the word Perillo in the Omni bar. Control Enter and it'll fill in the www and the .com automatically. That's been that way for a while, uh, in, likely in the web browser that you're currently using. But if you do an alt enter, it'll complete the www and the .com for you, but it'll push it into a new tab. So control enter 
an alt enter from the Omni bar is, is is quite helpful. And, and as I noted, they've they've got you know I, I like I said I just highlighted a few of the keyboard shortcuts here and certainly don't have a lot of time to dive into everything that is the Google Chrome beta at least at version 1.0. Needless to say, it is certainly worth downloading. Is it something that you're ready to set as your default browser? It's completely up to you. I think it's going to be more difficult to convince Firefox users to switch because the Firefox users have gotten so used to the plugins and the extensions and everything. Um, more than anything, my recommendation is to download it, try it, but don't just browse to any old website. Go to the websites you most frequent, see if they load faster, uh, and then you know go back to the way that you normally browse those websites, and uh, you're going to find that you'll you'll be just as addicted to speed as, as some of us, and I mean that in a good way. This is the only time you'll ever want to be addicted to speed is when it comes to browsing the web, because let's face it, that's pretty much what some of us do all day long. My email address is chris at perillo.com, if you didn't know that before. You're also welcome to stop by the website. Uh, People have been talking about Chrome pretty much all morning. Go figure. We're a bunch of geeks and the new web browsers out there from Google. Of course, we're going to be talking about that at least today in another five minutes. People are likely to launch into a discussion on the Xbox 360 versus PS3, possibly the new PSP that they're talking about. I, you never really know. Uh, largely, though, we are talking about uh, technology topics uh, all the time, like right now. You, you may be browsing the web doing something. Trust me, we're doing something completely different possibly the same. But if you'd like to, to chat it up with the rest of us, you're welcome to stop by. I'm streaming this video live 24 hours a day, and usually you can see the, 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 uh, the back of my head as I'm looking at this computer screen. It's what I do. If you don't believe me, stop by. You know, Stop by, in fact, in, 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 the, in the Google Chrome and see if it's a better experience. No, I'm still as boring as I used to be in your regular old web browser. But stop by. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it's a challenge to see if you're actually going to do it. I'm waiting for you right now at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.